Tonight we report on what school district's teachers are not joining the walkout on Thursday and camping regulations will be in place this weekend at the Moses Lake Sand Dunes. What's happening in sports, Bob? Thanks, Alan. Afraid of boys claim the district golf title and Quincy and Pullman battle it out in state soccer action. Let's take a quick glance at our weather center forecast. And here in the weather department, we're looking forward to a nice couple of days, but the weekend a little showery, but still not too bad. All the details coming on up. I'm Alan Troop, and we have all this and much more on i 501 News. From the i 501 HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is i 501 News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is i Fiber One News, and it starts now. Efreda, Quincy, and Soap Lake teachers are not joining the Moses Lake School District teachers in their one-day walkout on Thursday. The Moses Lake Educational Association notified district administrators last week that they're staging a one-day walkout to protest the state legislature's funding of public education. Their position is that the legislature has failed to provide adequate funding. Quincy Educational Association President Heather Jacobson said her fellow teachers decided to hold a letter-writing campaign to the legislature on Monday. Soap Lake School District Superintendent Dan McDonald said he's not been notified of any teachers intending to stage a walkout. Moses Lake School District Superintendent Michelle Price said the staff walkout is not impacting the high school's graduation ceremony on June 6th due to the final day of the school year moving to June 5th. Several Memorial Day events are planned this weekend throughout Grand County to honor fallen servicemen and women. Reporter Jeff Chu has more information. Efreda American Legion Post 28 members, along with children and parents with St. Rose of Lima Catholic School, will place flags and crosses at the graves of servicemen and women at Efreda Cemetery on Friday afternoon. It is the first event before several Memorial Day ceremonies honoring fallen servicemen and women that are taking place around Grant County. American Legion Post 28 is also conducting a Memorial Day ceremony at 10 a.m. Monday at the Valley View Memorial Park at 2174 Road A Northeast in Soap Lake. Ceremonies in Moses Lake and Afreda start at 11 a.m. Monday at the Afreda Cemetery at 333 E Street Southwest and Benson Family Cemetery at 14403 Road 2 Northeast in Moses Lake. A ceremony starts at 12.30 p.m. Monday at Quincy Cemetery at the corner of F Street Southwest and 7th Avenue Southwest. Efreda American Legion Post 28 members will be joined by Moses Lake Post 209 members as honor guard at the Soap Lake, Efreda, and Quincy Memorial Day ceremonies. The American Legion Honor Guard will also march in the Last Stand Main Street Parade at 11 a.m. Saturday in Cooley City. It is part of the rodeo there. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. The owner of the Pita Pit restaurant in Efreda is building a second Pita Pit in Moses Lake. Pam Lesman, owner of the Efreda Pita Pit, submitted plans on Monday to remodel a vacant commercial building space at 322 West Broadway Avenue in Moses Lake for the restaurant. According to Moses Lake City Records, a 2,225 square foot restaurant is planned. Peter Pitt restaurants offer fresh food in pita bread from euros to veggie combinations. The Freight of Peter Pitt opened in February of 2014. An uncooperative witness contributed to prosecutors dropping robbery and burglary charges against a Moses Lake man. David Mendez, a 27-year-old man, pleaded guilty in Grant County Superior Court to assault in the fourth degree. Prosecutors initially charged Mendez with robbery and burglary. The charges were changed as part of a plea agreement, and he was sentenced to 90 days in jail, with 89 days of the sentence suspended. Deputy Prosecutor Alan White stated the alleged victim refused to cooperate with the prosecution and further investigation showed the case didn't involve a home invasion or a gang-related crime. 
The issue was an assault as Mendez helped in the repossession of a car and the taking of a cell phone. The ownership of the car was in dispute and the person owning the phone was the one who took it. And now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. And we'll be back right after this. At Moses Lake Community Health Center, we have had the privilege to serve the local community since 1978. What I like about working at this clinic more than any other clinic that I've worked at is the patient care. With the patient care team that we've assembled, it allows us to take care of as many facets of the patient and their family's needs. Please take the opportunity to experience the high quality care provided at our clinics. when I thought the blizzard couldn't get any better. DQ put the blizzard inside a waffle cone. This is mind blowing. So when DQ asked me how I would tell the world, I said. <laughs> Sounds better in Italian. Pretty impressive, Liz. Any blizzard like confetti cake, now in a fresh baked waffle cone. This is fan food, not fast food. Well, hi again, everybody. Meteorologist Don Morelli with you here on iFiber Channel 1 News. Our weather, of course, brought to you by the fine folks at Bud Cleary Toyota Dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Hopefully you enjoyed your Wednesday, and as we slide through Thursday and Fridays, things are still going to be pretty nice. A uh, little showery pattern, though, does develop later in the day Friday, and it takes us right through Sunday. Uh, but it's not going to be a total washout for the holiday weekend. Here are the headlines. Temperature staying warm through Friday. And then a cool front comes in and a little upper air disturbance, so that creates instability. Showers from Friday afternoon, Friday night through Saturday into Sunday. And with the cooler showers in the area, we see temperatures struggling to get out of the high 70s. Still not too bad, you know. Normally 74 is a daytime high and we'll be still above that by a few degrees on Saturday and Sunday. Today we topped out at 83 with a morning low of 57. And again, not too bad of an afternoon, so hopefully you had a chance to get out and enjoy the uh, nice springtime temperatures. 83 degrees in Moses Lake, 85 is where we started. 89 and 35 were the records. So about five degrees cooler than what the record high. 82 right now, 38 degree dew point. So again, we're looking forward to another mild night tonight with a light to occasionally moderate east-northeast breeze. But all in all, looking very nice out there as we settle into our fine and dandy looking Wednesday evening. Here we go now, starting off right now, we're looking at the forecast of clouds and precipitation. And let me put it into motion, and as we do, you see that most of the moisture stays to our south, sort of falls apart during the loss of the daytime heating, but then when heat develops on Thursday afternoon, some more instability. And we'll see more of that on Friday develop. In fact, look at that, Friday afternoon, evening, a lot of the area from the basin east into the inland northwest looking a little showery, doesn't it? And then we see a little break overnight, but then more develops as we slide into Saturday afternoon, and that'll continue on Sunday as well. So a little bit of a shower pattern, but it's not gonna be an all weekend rain, so we'll have some times of fun in the holiday. Upper 70s are on the western areas along the shore though, 58 there in Long Beach, a little chilly. Inland northwest, lower 80s, not too bad to take. But again, a spot shower possible, particularly southern sections tomorrow and into Oregon particularly. Let me take a look at the uh, Columbia Basin here and you see temperatures very nice. Almost on the hot side, mid 80s. And again, we should be in the mid 70s, about 10 degrees above normal. And you can see we're above normal throughout the pattern, but the showers do cool us off into the 70s for the weekend. So a little showery for the weekend, but then we heat it back out as we slide out of the holiday weekend and to start a new work week. It's a wake up and smell the flowers thing. A kick cabin fever to the curb thing. It's a just gotta be me thing. 
It's a spring thing. And what better way to celebrate than in a new Toyota? Now with spring thing special offers, including financing as low as 0%, up to $2,000 in cash back, or special low payment leases. For spring thing special offers on all Toyota models, see any of your Inland Empire Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. to claim back-to-back -back district championships with a win at the Yakima Elks Golf Club yesterday. The Tigers shot a team total 312. East Valley was second with 321 points. Aaron Whalen was low-round medalist with a 73. Mason Butchard carded a 76, which landed him in a tie for second. Josh Johnson was plus four after five holes, but came on strong to tie for third with a 78. All three Tigers have qualified for state. Ethan Boyd missed the cut by one stroke and is the number one alternate for the team. State play takes place at Liberty Lake in Spokane, May 27th and 28th. Pullman got first half goals from Ryan Campbell and Micah Lauderquist, and the Greyhounds got past Quincy 2-1 in state soccer action last night. Campbell struck first 18 minutes into the fuss, Lagerquist converted a penalty kick three minutes later after Jack's keeper, Gil Avila, received a questionable red card and was dismissed from the contest. Daniel Contreras got Quincy on the board three minutes into the second half of action off a of Jesus Guzman assist. The first round loss ended a successful season for the Jacks, who finished as co siwak champs and district runner-up. East Valley came back to beat Afraid of 6-2 in first round district softball action in Yakima. The Tigers took their only lead of the game with a run in the top of the first. The Red Devils responded with two runs in the second and two in the third and never looked back. Sarah Dotson went the distance for Afraid of, giving up six runs off seven hits in the circle. Brooke Stutzman was two for three at the dish with the double. The loss bounces the Tigers out of postseason play. The Quincy Jacks in the season ended with a 14-0 loss to Ellensburg on the diamond. Afraid of girls golf heads to district play today, looking for the same success the boys had in Yakima last night. Here's Sean Wells with the story. The Afraid of girls golf team is gearing up for postseason play. The Tigers finished first during the regular season, earning the CWAC conference title. After finishing fourth in state as a team last year, Head coach Heidi Burns thinks our girls have the right mentality to win state. We care a lot about these kids. We care a lot about our program. We um, we have strict rules. Not all of our competition that other other teams in the league they don't all have the same mentality that we do. You know, you come out here to focus. You come out here to practice. You don't come out here to goof around. The Tigers are led by a couple seniors and star freshman Kennedy Peters. Peters is one of the top junior golfers in the region, playing tournaments all over the West Coast. Coach Burns is astonished by some of the shots Peters can hit. You're like, how did she do that? But it's just what she does. She doesn't focus on the negative. If I have a bad shot, she goes to the ball and she studies it. And she's like, okay, how can I get this to get on the green? She tries to do anything she can to get it on there. Kennedy adjusted very well to high school golf. She feels her mental game has improved, allowing her to be more consistent on the course. Starting off the season has always been kind of hard for me, but I think this season I've really done a good job of being consistent and, you know, shooting consistent rounds and just getting a lot mentally tougher, you know, and so I think that it's helped me a lot. This year's state championship is held at Meadowwood Golf Course just east of Spokane. Peters hopes to have her game championship ready, just like one of her golf idols in his prime. One of my biggest idols is Tiger Woods. And so that's probably odd to say, but that he is. And so I just think always watching him and his drive that he had, you know, that's what I would really like to be like, you know, my game like. For I Fiber One News, Sean Wells. We'll be back after this commercial break. Hello, my name is Cheryl Kono. 
I am your local Efreda Farmers Insurance Agent. Here at Cheryl Kono Insurance Agency, our customers always come first. We don't just work here, we live here. Please stop by the office, call, email, or Facebook me for a free auto, home, life, business, or farm and ranch quote today. We are insurance. We are farmers. Come in for a free quote today. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. And the patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Our Spotlight story tonight is about a free contest in Moses Lake offered by an orthodontics practice, giving one person the chance to get free braces. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. Uh, the ideal is, as we're looking at that, over time, if, as we wait, if we were... An orthodontics practice in Moses Lake is offering a chance for you to get your teeth straightened for free. Parkinson and Butler Orthodontics, which shares office space with Lakeside Dental at 1708 South Clover Drive in Moses Lake, put on the giveaway of braces for the first time. Orthodontist David Butler said the contest starts with a magnet that a patient or interested person can get at the Parkinson and Butler Orthodontics front desk. They then place it on their car. Parkinson and Butler staffers who are out and about are looking for the magnets. And so they'll come along and they'll place a little golden ticket on their door if they're found and then the patient is able to uh, fill that out and bring it into our office uh, to be entered into the drawing, both the monthly drawing and then the grand prize drawing, which is for the, the free braces. They can get an additional entry if they, they take a picture of themselves with the magnet uh, and post it to our Facebook page. The grand prize drawing for the braces will take place 6.30 p.m. May 28th at their office, and the winner will be notified if not present. Butler, who came to eastern Washington from Austin, Texas, where he first practiced, explained how he came up with the contest idea. So it was actually something that we, uh, we did down in Texas uh, when I was down there practicing an orthodontist in Texas. Uh, it was a fun fun little experience and contest that we did with the patients down there and they loved it, the staff loved it, it was just all around a lot of fun so uh, I was excited as soon as I came up here to get that going with our practice. Butler and his staff of seven are based in Richland but they travel to Moses Lake aboard their so-called smile shuttle every two weeks to see as many as 60 patients. He said the Moses Lake office has about 700 patients in the Grant County area and Othello. Butler said the value of the prize is about $5,000. So it could be a significant value, um, obviously, giving away the free braces for sure. Whoever wins the contest, uh, um, they could use it for themselves, um, or they could use it for a friend or a loved one or anything like that, family member. Um, and so, you know, we'll obviously want to make sure we, we take a look at them and see that they're a, a good candidate for braces um, and, and kind of go from there. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. We'll be right back after this. Have you been to iFiber1.com? The most up-to-date news in the Columbia Basin is just one click away. With news, sports, and weather, you can stay in the know with what's going on in your community. Read your news on the go by visiting iFiber1.com on your tablet or even your phone. Follow us on Facebook for quick updates and discuss the news with others in our area. Your number one news source in the Columbia Basin is i501.com. Check it out today. What's white and yellow and red all over? If you said the local book telephone directory, the one with the purple sunset on the cover, then you're right. In print and online at statewidewyp.com, it features up-to-date local maps, community information, and a calendar of events. With a restaurant dining guide with full local menus and a reverse directory, you're sure to find the number you're looking for. It's the best way to get the information you need. Pick up a copy of the local book today or visit statewideyp.com. Welcome back. Camping restrictions are in place as thousands of people head to the Moses Lake Sand Dunes for Memorial Day weekend. 
This year, camping is not allowed anywhere west of the third restroom building to the intersection of Sand Dunes Road and Powerline Road. The restrictions are in place to allow access for emergency responders. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, congestion during the holiday weekend has caused traffic issues, sometimes leaving only enough room for one vehicle to pass at a time. The camping restrictions allow emergency responders better access to the popular beach area. The restrictions are also in place for Fourth of July and Labor Day weekends. In 2014, nearly 11,000 people were at the sand dunes for Memorial Day weekend. Spokane-based teacher, naturalist, and author Jack Nisbet presents The Longest Journey, a slide presentation from his book, Ancient Places. The free presentation follows the story of the Willamette Meteor. The event is sponsored by Moses Lake Museum and Art Center and starts at 7 p.m. on Thursday in the Civic Center Auditorium. Nisbet is the author of several books that explore the human and natural history of the Columbia River drainage, including Sources of the River, The Collector. His latest project, Ancient Places, is a collection of stories about the interplay between people and large-scale events on the landscape. The book is for sale at the museum, and Nisbet is signing copies after the slideshow. Representative Dan Newhouse wants to make information about endangered species more available. Fourth District Congressman Newhouse, along with other members of the House Endangered Species Act Working Group, re recently introduced a bill aimed at requiring the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Marine Fisheries Service to provide states with all data before a species is added to the Endangered Species Act. It also requires the best available scientific and commercial data used by the federal government, including data provided by the affected states, tribes, county, and city governments. The bill's co-sponsor, Representative Randy Neugebauer, a Texas Republican, stated the federal government used the act to regulate the actions of farmers, rangers, and business owners. In Northwest News, a Washington man says he'll be forced to put several of his wild animals to death. That's due to a local ordinance ordering him to get rid of the animals. Now he's getting the word out, even though his fight may be running out of time. Good boy. Max is one of 17 wolves Dave Colburn reluctantly plans to kill. If we cannot find a place to place him, he'll be euthanized. Colburn runs Predators of the Heart on 10 acres in Anacortes. For nearly 14 years, he's taken his exotic animals to schools, libraries, churches, and fairs to educate people about wildlife. They're not hurting anybody. But Skagit no, County has filed know. a lawsuit against Colburn, saying he's violating an ordinance against possessing potentially dangerous wild animals. Last year, wolves, cougars, venomous snakes, and foxes were added to the list. I think we're going to have to kill them. Can you jump up there? That means two dozen animals the organization bought, rescued, or raised are on the hit list if it can't find zoos to accept them. Oh, it's breaking my heart. These animals are my life. Skagit County Commissioner Lisa Janicki says pulling at heartstrings isn't fair play. She calls it a matter of public safety. This isn't a petting zoo. They're called predators for a reason, and the county wants uh, predators of the heart to be within compliance of state law. Sasha, you are a good girl, aren't you? Colburn says placing his animals is tough and expensive. This guy will probably be a lot easier to place. He doesn't have much time before the county threatens fines that could total 50 grand a day. It's a $2,000 a day per animal fine that we're going to be up against having to pay. Colburn says he doesn't have that kind of money and can't afford an attorney to fight and will probably just have to roll over. Maybe I'll get to keep maybe about 20% of what I have, maybe. And that's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.